Well, it looks like it's time for another update to the Ghibli World project, and I don't know where to start because there's so much that happened. The world of Totoro is looking great so far. The area surrounding the house is developing nicely, and the little tunnel through the bushes that May runs through is there, and it leads up to Totoro's tree. If you go down the little hole in the tree, you will find yourself in Totoro's den. The bus stop where Mei and Satsuki meet Totoro is looking good, complete with tall trees and a Shinto shrine. Down the road from that is Kanta's family's house, complete with chicken coop. There is now a new spawn area where first-time visitors will start at. They walk through a path in the dark with rules scattered here and there, and then they get teleported to this elaborate platform with gates to each of the three areas, Spirited Away, Totoro, and the Patreon map. The builders are now displayed in the nearby gardens. The lower class area of the ghost town was completely redecorated and filled in, and now it feels so much more lively compared to when it was mostly empty shells of generic buildings. The beginning of Spirited Away was analyzed, screenshotted, and stitched together to get long panoramas to use in making the long road that Chihiro and her parents drive down for the first few minutes of the movie. It's a long road. I've recently compiled all the screenshots I've taken of this project since 2011 and archived them on Flickr albums on spiritedawayminecraft.com. Now you can see how the map has progressed in five years. Looking back, I was shocked to see how simple this map used to be, knowing how proud I was of it back then. A huge breakthrough for me was discovering how to make custom characters. I recently downloaded Nox Crew's new map called Terra Swoop Force, and on their map they have many villager scientists with their arms at their side. This completely baffled me, so I disabled the automatic resource pack and checked out what they were made of. Turns out the texture of each villager was modified by erasing the arms, and then in game each villager wore a block on their head, and the block model was changed to be side hanging arms. This opened up a whole world of possibilities, and since then I've made three custom characters. The first is the Radish Spirit, the second is a Frogman Worker, and the third is one of the spirits. The cool thing is that you can make any part of the villager invisible, so the spirit has an invisible head and feet. I plan to make many more characters to populate the bathhouse. Other than the new characters, the only other custom blocks and textures that I've made since then are a new animated steam texture, a thicker, bendier string, and an ornament to go on the revised red railings on either side of the entrance bridge. I also replaced some of the banner patterns to fit a more Japanese theme. So that's all I'm going to say for now, except we're still open to growing our team, particularly with people who know how to use command blocks efficiently. If you'd like to apply to be a builder, click here. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.